The new CAO has much greater capability in detecting chemicals in the canopies that we're flying over, and also in the uh, structure of the canopy. We're able to image in 3D at a higher resolution. It gives us much more detail about the biomass and the habitat that the canopy creates in these forests. And the chemical detection tells us about the health of the forest and the, the, uh, the, the function of the forest. And what we've done is we've been able to take the new technology and convert those chemical and structural uh, signals into biodiversity estimates. And so are you now able to fly larger areas? Yeah, the new system is flown on an aircraft and is designed to fly in a way that we can map very large areas. Sometimes we're mapping areas as, as large as 50,000 hectares a day. And over the course of a month or two, we're able to collect up millions of hectares of data that way. So is there anything else like this out there? No. Uh, the system is unique in a bunch of ways. One way is that uh, the different instruments that are on board the CAO work together in a unique way to create a complete picture of what the tropical forest looks like in terms of its 3D structure and its chemical composition and the biodiversity and really that's unique in the world. And so what are you specifically working on here in Peru? Here in Peru we're working on three uh, different issues. One is we're looking at the effects of the 2010 mega drought uh, which ended around J January of 2011. It went through the late part of 2010 and we had done some mapping in 2009, so we've returned in 2011 to look at the difference and to look for uh, what the forest has uh, undergone during the mega drought in terms of mortality and uh, canopy stress and any other signals of uh, drought impacts that we can pick up. The second one is we're working with the Ministry of Environment in Peru to advance their capabilities in monitoring deforestation and forest degradation. And the CAO is, is the kind of system that allows us to collect up information that then feeds into their satellite monitoring program to improve it. And then the third area is we're really doing scientific exploration. We're looking at biodiversity in regions that have never been uh, put down on the science map, so to speak. They've never been really explored in a way that tells us what is out there and what is the functioning of it and what areas are, are uh, away from human contact and what areas are more uh, close to human contact and might be uh, areas to consider protection in the future. And what's next for you after Peru? After Peru, we will uh, probably, probably be operating in Colombia and Panama. The two countries have uh, incredible gradients of biodiversity and are also undergoing some uh, interesting and complicated changes in climate. So we're going to be in Colombia and Peru mapping carbon, mapping biodiversity and chemical function throughout the, both of the countries. Okay, so what we're doing here, I have the job on the ground today. The crew is up in the plane. You can see them here. If you zoom in, you can see where the plane is. And we have a tracking system that allows me to monitor their movement over the Amazon. And I'm combining that with cloud cover data shown here because tropical forests are very cloudy places. So what we've done at Carnegie is develop a method for uh, vectoring the plane to the clearest areas for data collection. Today they're in a really exciting place. This is uh, one of the most remote parts of the central Peruvian Amazon. They're over a submontane area that goes down to the very lowest of lowlands before you go into Brazil. You just see the plane move here. Uh, it just jumped from there to there. It's updated every few minutes so that I can have an idea of what they're doing. And as they're doing this work, I can talk to them on the satellite phone and uh, change their direction, put them to a new area that might be clearer or better for data collection. And has this uh, area been inventoried before for, uh, by biologists? These areas have had little to no survey done, botanical survey, ecological survey. They're some of the least known places in the Western Amazon. And what's exciting about this is that we already know that the Western Amazon is one of the hot spots of biodiversity in the world. And what we're doing is we're going to some of the hottest of the hot spots. <sighs> this is the